and welcome to Clock Tower Game Studios. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry we're a day late. Um, life's been coming quick lately. Uh, so last week I had to travel for job interviews and surprise, I actually got the job offer. Uh, I'll know more here in the next week or so. Hopefully there's a background check pending. Shouldn't be a problem. I'm not really anticipating anything. It's not like I'm a wanted felon or anything. So no big deal there, but uh, that in mind, just spoiler alert for the rest of the month and probably next couple months, things are going to get a little hectic. I'll probably have to slow down the video production schedule to every other week again. Um, that's all still up in the air right now, just biding time, waiting to make sure everything's uh, taken care of, all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed, all that good stuff. So without further ado, however, Let's get on to the build. Uh, this week I finished the transit station for Neo Nagoya. I have just gone ahead and made it all one solid piece. Originally I had planned to make the roof section modular so I could change it out and change, you know, whatever kind of vehicle was coming into land. But I decided to just go with it and leave it as is. It could be Helicopters, VTOS, or VTOLs, vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, that sort of thing. Um, in this case, I'm going to be building uh, at some point, not sure when exactly, but at some point going to be building a small shuttle, like um, small shuttle craft so that'll actually be the thing. It'll be uh, built to where it serves as sort of an orbital uh, bus. So that's the plan for that. Um, the build is pretty much finished. There's a little few detailed things, weathering that I want to do and a little bit more signage, but I'm pretty happy with where it's at and I'm happy to show off the finished product. I'm going to go ahead and call it finished for now. If I decide I want to add more after I get the board put together and it looks like it needs more pop and shazam, then I'll go back and do it. But anyway, let's just dive right in and get to work. Okay, so the first thing I needed to do to really get tucked into this build was to get a bunch of painting done. Actually, that's the primary thing I needed to finish on this build after I got the uh, last couple of stages and the concrete done for the steps. Painting is a big part of what I have to do this week. So I'm just going to crank through painting the metallics on the outer cladding. Uh, here you'll notice there's a little texture in the cardstock where it didn't tear quite right or it got wet at some point or something. That's not a big deal. I end up using that to my advantage for weathering later. Um, it helps add some texture to some weathered piping and stuff after a while. But um, really just keep it kind of tidy. You'll notice I taped off the section where I didn't want this metallic paint to be. And other than that, it's pretty straightforward basic painting. So you may notice that the surroundings in this video, at least at the start, are significantly different than normal. Uh, I had to take the show on the road for a couple days for a job interview, as I mentioned at other points. Um, so here I'm in my hotel room getting some work done. 
Um, here at this stage, I'm just painting some little fiddly detail bits. These were some uh, various shaped beverage containers that I had 3D printed from my own designs uh, before my printer crapped out on me. So here you see I'm just adding some more color and then I'll decide later where I'm going to put these. So like I said, just going to be painting a lot for this for the most part. Coolest thing about this is the bits that I'm painting. Uh, like I said, these bottles were a couple different shapes. Uh, they ended up being a little small. They're a little bit too true to scale, so they're hard to see, and it's hard to tell what they really are other than just small cylinder shapes. So that's kind of a downside. But they do serve their purpose, and I'll uh, be sticking them down later. This part actually was one of the biggest holdups on finishing, finishing this build altogether. Um, my printer has been down because of issues with the screen and the motherboard. And while fighting with that, I was really, you know, I had convinced myself I wanted to wait to do this until I had the printer so I could print out a matching window frame for this side. So instead of waiting longer, I decided, screw it, I'd just build one out of plastic card. So I found my thicker plastic card, which was pretty close in thickness to the uh, printed window frame that I had. And then I essentially just build a box. So I just use the uh, printed one as my template. And as you can see, this is the uh, finished one. I've put both the uh, interior and exterior detail. There's the printed one compared to the built one. The uh, final product on the uh, built one actually come out a lot smoother, but for this, and being cyberpunk, I kind of like the beat up, kind of worn appearance of the uh, printed one. So they both have their pros and cons. So being as this is a transportation hub for public transit, I decided I did not have enough waiting area and enough seating for passengers waiting for their next ride. So here you'll see I'm just using coffee stirs that I've stained as well as some toothpicks for the framework and I'm just going to build a waiting bench. So like I said, this is uh, pretty straightforward. It's just coffee stir, toothpick, and some super glue and kind of using an older model and then a mini separately for scale.
And here is the most fiddly bit of building either the picnic tables or these benches. It's the legs. It's always such a pain to get the legs completely perpendicular and then all lined up to where they're parallel. Fortunately, this is going to be an interior detail where you're not going to be able to see it from every angle. So it's a little easier to hide mistakes here. But even so, just getting these to stand up and stay where I wanted them was a real pain in the butt. And in keeping with the luxurious theme of the Transit Hub, like this is sort of for higher class citizens, I've decided to add a wooden framed mirror because that just, I don't know, it just seemed like a classy thing to have on the uh, back wall between the restroom doors. So here I'm just making the frame out of more coffee stirs and the mirror itself is actually uh, metallic reflective um, scrapbooking paper. Having finally finished most of the interior detailing, including uh, building this set of mirrored shelves for what I decided was going to be a bar area, uh, it's time to start putting stuff in. Here you can say, see that I've uh, painted and installed both a knocked over drink bottle, I'm putting drink bottles on the shelves, there's a couple stools there. Uh, Callie actually made the stools for me. They, those are made from uh, a button, some cloth scraps that I thought were fitting, and uh, some toothpicks for the legs. And then the uh, suitcase was actually 3D printed from uh, a Patreon. I'm pretty sure that was from uh, Anvil Industries recently. At this point, I decided that the walls were still too bare. And since this also includes an automated ticket counter, which are common in Japan, I decided that uh, the subway map or the transit map needed to be above the, uh, the actual console. So here I'm just using uh, printed off paper and gluing it to the wall. This, since it's interior, doesn't need to be nearly as um, solid as it would if it were on the exterior of the building but i think in another video later on probably next week i'll go over uh, how i use printed out details like this and how to make them solid and sturdy while i was at this i also decided that uh, the area behind the bar was a little too empty so I'm using an offcut of my foam core and some printed out beer signs that would make a good like deep cooler, like the uh, standard bar size one. So here you can see I'm just cutting the foam core to match the pictures that I printed out. These have, I believe it's Sapporo brand uh, beer. Like it's a typical Japanese uh, brewer that's uh, one of the more popular ones. So I went with some of their actual signage. Um, they're not a sponsor, obviously. I just thought it would be cool to use authentic, uh, authentic materials to help keep this kind of in touch with what inspired it. So here I'm just cutting out foam core and I end up building a box out of it. And then uh, I'll come back in and talk about the actual interesting part of this when it comes up.
And here's where we come up on the clever bit. So inspired by Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft, um, instead of using um, plastic rod, which I don't have a great amount of, and I didn't have any in the right scale, I decided to use plain, thin, uncooked spaghetti for this. So all I did here was cut the spaghetti to length. I'm just making some handles and hinges, just some surface details for the uh, cooler's lid. So yeah, I'm just gonna cut that to length and then super glue it into place. And then I'll just paint over it just like it was normal plastic rod. And next up is getting some of the window treatments done. So this is the quote glass effect that I'm adding. So this is just a food container that's been cleaned and prepped. It's just a kind of a clear, rigid, not really hard plastic, but as you can see, I just took my time, cut it down to size, and then I will just super glue it into place. So the next thing I wanted to do to help add a little bit of uh, credibility to this, some extra detail and to help tie the whole thing together and to kind of pay homage to the uh, inspiration for it uh, is to add these uh, safety posters or these, um, you know, these kind of etiquette posters that are really common around the uh, subways near uh, Tokyo and uh, Nagoya and some of the other bigger Japanese cities. Uh, the transit system has these. Um, they just cover a bunch of different varieties of topics like uh, don't be drunk in public transit, um, that sort of thing. So I put a bunch of those on the windows too. And so for this part, you can see that I have discovered I've made a mistake. So the window or the uh, lighting fixtures that I've already cut and glued into the ceiling at the very beginning of all this, uh, they're backwards compared to the layout of the interior and the uh, angled doors. So I had to uh, kind of backtrack and recut those a little bit. Not so much the fixtures themselves, but just the, uh, the uh, fixtures rather than the actual holes that they're mounted to. So that was, that was kind of distracting and annoying, but it was easy enough to remedy just moving some stuff around. So here, it's back to painting. Here, uh, I've added a what'll be a metal grate to the uh, roof where it's like the most high traffic area that's also subject to some of the blast from the uh, vehicle's exhausts. So here, I'm just dry brushing a metal effect over a primed piece of what's called granny grating or a cross stitch grate. So that's just black primer that I sprayed on because uh, otherwise paint really doesn't adhere to whatever kind of plax plastic this is made out of. So you've got to spray prime it really to get the best out of it. And then I just hit it with a heavy dry brush of some uh, silver hobby paint. Here the landing pad roof section has been attached and I'm just adding landing markings and from here on in it's again back to a lot of painting. Um, the yellow for the railings, the uh, metallics for the uh, grate, the landing marks, uh, the, just a lot of detail painting left to do.
At this stage, pretty much all of the actual painting is finished and I'm just going back and doing some weathering. So the first thing I do is I apply a heavy wash of my homemade black wash. I'm just going to slather that over the entire landing surface because the uh, paint applied to it was just much too vibrant. So I'm darkening that back down and bringing the whole thing down and adding some depth to it by adding that black wash. At this point, I also go through and add some other weathering. I um, dry brushed the uh, railing with a silver to kind of make it look like beat up painted metal. Uh, I also added some graffiti, which I'll touch on in a later video of how I do that. And here I'm just touching up some of the paint around where I've weathered near the graffiti. Um, weathering over the graffiti helps kind of tie it into the whole build and makes it look more believable. So that's what I was doing here. Just weathering and doing some touch up paint. And here we get to see some glory shots of the finished product put in with the uh, rest of the Neo Nagoya terrain I've completed so far. So here you can see the uh, Koban in the foreground and some of the scattered terrain for the streets, as well as the Buddhist park there at the closest point. And there is the transit hub itself. It blends in really nice. It looks good. I think it looks perfectly in place, high detail. Um, it doesn't really shine quite the same until you get the lights on though. Once you've got it in a little bit of a low light environment and you turn those lights on, it just pops, it looks magnificent, it brings out the detailing on the windows. Uh, you can still see everything on the inside from the flooring to the little details I put on the seating, the uh, toys that Callie made for sale that are on the shelf there. And here is one of my favorite parts. The stairs hide the switch to turn the lights on and off, and they blend right in seamlessly. So I absolutely love how this turned out. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen and maybe it'll inspire you to build some of your own urban terrain. Uh, like I said, there's still some details I wanna add, but so far I'm pretty happy. Um, I really like the lighting effect, the way the inside of the bar area and the waiting area look are fantastic, uh, it really, really ties everything together and I think it'll make an awesome piece for my board. Uh, it brings me two eight by eights closer to having a fully playable board. It puts me right at having half of a board. So making progress, the other half, I've got, uh, got a good start on two more buildings. Really, I've got a good start on probably three more tiles, maybe four. So we'll see how those go. So I may be halfway to having the second tile done too, which would be fantastic. Um, making a lot of progress in a hurry. I still do need to get a few more buildings with playable interiors and with playable elevation finished up. So there's some of that that needs done. But overall, I'm really happy with progress. Um, hopefully we can keep this up and maybe have a fully playable board soon. But anyway, um, remember, if you like what you saw, if it inspired you to build something, if you learned something from it, be sure to hit the like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the station, channel rather, uh, hit the uh, notification bell down there so you'll see what we're up to next. I've got a couple more builds that feature more lighting coming up, I think, uh, doing it a different way because I'm kind of playing with different approaches as I go. So be sure to check those out. Um, also, if you really like what you see and you want to help support us and get our games published and uh, help improve the channel more and more, be sure to check out Patreon and buy me a coffee. Uh, you can check those all out, including our other social medias, Twitter, Insta, and uh, Facebook, all in the links below. And remember, at the clock tower, it's always game time.